situations. And also, it gives Io a really good friend, right? You want to... When you're playing Io, you want at least one core that truly benefits from overcharge. Um, and it's nice that it's not only Storm, because that means if there's a fight that Storm isn't a part of, or if Storm has to go base, or if Storm dies, your fight, your one fighting partner isn't your only play. Um, so I, I've always been a fan of this when you have Io. I have two cores that synergize. Uh, the Furion is not really the best partner, right? But the other two are good. All right, smoke from Beast Coast into the triangle of Bet Boom. And Arl's in a bit of trouble here. Impale is leveled, but they won't be going for it, it looks like. Clipped by the tower a bit, and the warding expedition has come to an end. They do know now that there is a ward mid for Bet Boom because Sven got hit by the tower outside of the tower's usual vision range, but within its attack range. Um, however, they don't know where it is, and they do place the sentry and miss it. So that's a very nice start here for Laurel to have this information to begin with. And they're going to try to use this to maybe get a D ward of their own, and they will. Going to be grabbed by Laurel here. How many Null Talismans will he buy this game? Will we see the the, the Storm Spirit special where you go for five Null Talismans? Could very well happen. My goodness, it what great a, gameplay, it Cinderin. It is an interesting... Uh, <laughs> very interesting. It's funny because when they... Oh, Taneko might be first blood. He's going to pop the Fairy Fire, but to no avail, Stinger. Last pick lich, baby. There it is. The Frost Blast double. That's good stuff. Deals a lot of damage and long slow, and they easily run him down with their two here. And interesting here. So Whisper's just going to get in a couple of pot shots here on the range creep so that they can illuminate it. But yeah. oh, nice sidestep from Suneko. Yeah, that's quite a bit of damage we got here, Cinderin. Have to be careful. And getting the blast off so he can take out that range creep. But it's going to end up being denied anyway. So they didn't get that last right click that they needed, apparently, to, and to secure Whisper, that. I think Whisper didn't do the full Illuminate channel because he got pressured by Suneko oh, so much. Oh, I see. And now he actually gets pressured even further back. Do they have a salve? They do not currently have one. This one come? No, there's not even one coming out for Nyx. He's getting a Sentry Ward, and he will be too late to block the small camp if they wanted to do that. So the pull is also available here uh, for Suneko. One of the better carries to pull for is Nature's Prophet just because of how e extremely powerful he is in lane on his own. He can sometimes be left alone by the support and still stand his ground 1v2. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think blocking the pull camp when you're laning against the carry nature's prop is actually very important. Uh, but we'll see. Perhaps it's not going to be that big of a deal. As long as Gojira can keep running at Suneko, then maybe it will be just fine. All right, we're getting in the mid lane. We're going to see a Storm Spirit versus Lesh matchup. We'll talk about that in just a moment. It looks like Noticed is applying some pressure to K1 and Stinger, but the Frost Shield is there. Uh, but still a lot of harassment going the way of Bet Boom. Uh, it's I see not much mana for left Slardar. for Beast Coast right now. I think even though you're playing into Frost Shield, you don't mind playing this lane against as Slardar. Like, you go for them. If Frost Shield gets popped, you reset, and you wait, and then you can fight again. Frost Shield's a long cooldown. It's 30 seconds level one. And it's not like you're going to get killed by Sven Lich if, with an IO behind you with Overcharge. Right. So oh. Bottom lane, nice turnaround here is Force Major able to pick one up for himself onto K1. Uh... That was the courier kill. That was the courier kill. That's true, Cinder. Man, doing Whisper. camera actually breaks my brain. It's, Whisper kills Suneko. It's awful. As you said. Yep, thank you. Appreciate that, Cinder. That's what you're here for, to mm -hmm. clean up my disgusting mess. Mm -hmm. I am filthy after all. Uh, but yeah, good start from Bet Boom uh, at the very beginning, but we got two kills from Beast Coast now to kind of bring them back. I think it's important they find some sort of pressure in the in their lanes just because, like I said, the top matchup should be very good for the Slaughter IO. There, there you see it, right? They force out Frost Shield and Stormhammer. They reset. And now if they want to go again, they are ready to rock and roll now. And Sven and Lich's defensive line isn't ready until in 10 seconds on the Sven stun and 20 seconds on the shield. So K1 kind of has to be a little bit cautious in lane, which you don't really want to Sven. You just want to farm a lot. Um, but with every level Slaughter gets, this gets harder and harder. For that Sven, mid lane storm against Lesh is likely going to be roughly a wash. Like maybe Seasma can give you a little bit ahead here against Laurel, but Storm, you know what he's gonna do. He can always just farm small camp, stack it, and take yep. it down. He'll get what he wants yep. at any point. I mean, is there a matchup that you absolutely hate playing against if you're Storm? We we're just having this discussion off camera as well. I don't think there's an unplayable matchup for Storm mid. 
I'm trying to think of what the worst one is, actually. It might be Huskar. Oh, Huskar. Possibly. Okay. Like, he one. just goes and stands on your hill and keeps shooting fire spears at you, so if you want to mm -hmm. go in and place a static remnant, you take a lot of damage. Not a lot of teams but, play uh, Huskar, but yeah. the East Coast, and I mean, South America in general, I guess. That is a staple. Suneko doing a good amount of damage to this Nyx right now. I'm watching chat. They're pointing out you have music on. I mean, this isn't even my account. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice that. I was rocking it out earlier. Oh. Why do you reach Twitch chat, read Twitch chat while you're casting? Something? Because they have valuable feedback sometimes, such as there's music on. What, what is... People don't like music anymore? What if I turn on... Uh, I, it's not my account, but... Different towers. You think they'll get tilted over that? I just think people... Oh, this is going to be... Oh. Okay. Spike Carapace is there. It's going to delay the inevitable. Is Soneko able to get that kill for himself? Is this your hint, your hint that you want me to turn off music? I mean, it doesn't really bother me. It I'm doesn't saying. bother me either. Okay. <laughs> was it was it a complaint or a <laughs> <laughs> If you don't like music, you can suck it. If you think about that. <laughs> As there's the deny onto the tower for Suneko. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, it's very soothing. I don't understand. This is the calm. one thing calming me down this match. I don't want to be too overhyped, you know, is Laurel. Okay. Split Earth. He's going to end up miss, missing with the Lightning Storm setup. Uh, is there a team that you think needs to get off to a better start? Uh, like, is it uh, important for either squad that they... Like, the Sven is a weird pick, so that's why I'm asking. I, I would find the Dire lineup pretty difficult to play from behind. Because I think Lich, Coddle, and Sven all lose a lot of their purpose if they lose the map. Right. too fast so i would definitely say it's important for beast coast to not fall behind in lanes too much see this uh ward being taken out it was just a deny though as the hawk so what kind of build is this nature's profit going to go it looks like deso is going to be his first item that's yeah. a very fast Deso. So, Dakar plays this... He played this style where he had a lot of building damage and just keeps playing in this very obnoxious... Almost reminiscent of good old split push Nature's Prophet, right? Oh, he actually got soloed by Whisper. Yep, I definitely caught that one. And we're also going to catch this kill onto Smile in the mid lane. Trying to get off that split earth, but it's not going to happen as Laurel gets an arcane rune. So, this Nyx Assassin is being blocked off by Suneko. Is going to go down as well. So another kill for Bet Boom here. But yeah, they did lose their Nature's Profit, as you said, in the bot lane. Yeah, good for them that Whisper finds that solo pick because outside of that, this is starting. This was starting to look like a pretty rough transition into the mid game. I know it's not like that terrible in this current game state, but I'm just worried for this Lich and Sven. Like, how are they going to bridge the gap when the Radiant starts really ramping up their pace? Because you know they will. It's Io Slardar Storm Nature's Prophet. Like, this is full on aggression. Um, the Hawk might even, with this potential physical Oof. damage focus build. Okay, Suneko might die here. Yep, he's quite uh, dead my... indeed. Um, Whisper. With Seneca, or with uh, with the Hawk's focus on physical damage, he has the option to just split push and then join fights if necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, if his team is strong enough, they don't necessarily even need him in fights, right? Just the, the other four heroes together have so much offensive potential, as long as they have the map control. And Boots of Travel already online for Whisper. Rush the crap out of that one. Really fast timing, in fact as he is the top net worth in the game. But the problem with that, from Beast Coast's perspective, the next three going the way of Bet Boom. And Sven is sixth on net worth. And this hero, does, just in my experience, does not play well from behind. Right? Really? Like, I mean, you rely on stacks, I assume. But. Yeah, and controlling your triangle reliably in this patch, if you don't have... Like, you, you need the other four to be really strong then, right? So that you can cover that area reliably. Mm. Uh, it, it feels like it's not going to be that easy of a of a of a task, and like if you if you look at it from the perspective of just raw, okay, as long as you can farm ancients, well, the other team can too. So if you come out of the laning stage poorly and they're faster to start doing it than you are, then oh, you're still smile getting ball, initiated right? on by Laurel. Doesn't look like they have enough damage to take him out outright. But Force Major is here to try to play along with the Nature's Prophet, and that's going to be enough to at least get the trade. But it's support for mid. Yep, that boom takes that. Very nice stun uh, from Gojira there. Salvages the situation a bit. They get the two-man stun into two-man stun combo. But yeah, just too much. Too much damage to withstand here for Lashrak. And 
He's playing with a very minimal line of defense, right? He has the Nyx stun covering him, and then he has Frost Shield, which wasn't there. So if he gets jumped, he will die very, very fast to the Radiant Burst. Got to be very careful how you play the Lesh. Whisper in the top lane now. Yep. Uh, going for a Spirit Vessel. He is... Hey, how... How common is Coddle offlane these days? Because when they first made those changes in 7.31, it was either mid or offlane pretty much every time. It's but not it feels like it's right fallen now. off big time since then. Yeah, almost nobody plays it here in this role. Cool to see it back. Whisper. Whisper. Oh, yeah, he's fine. If Notice hadn't given up there, he might have actually got him, but he got dissuaded by the TP fake coming out from Gojira there. He had to cancel it himself on Nyx, though, so now he's stuck bottom. And that means this top tower is probably gone, right? You could rotate the Hawk right now if you want. He has teleport. Uh, well, just up to farm, though, and feels Radiant like his team can handle this without his involvement. Indeed. And he would be right in thinking that, although Radiant they don't really have any good pushing heroes, so this will take half of eternity for a notice to get done, but eventually he will, because nobody wants to come up here. But on the, the other dark. side, you can see Smile here with Radiant the Diabolic Edict. No Glyph. That's going to be an easy tier one for Beast Coast. They do fortify their tower on the top lane, but oh, as you talk about... Okay. No mana. Storm couldn't pull. Hmm. That did not work out the way they wanted it to. K1 has his ult activator right now as well. He's going to get a lot of mana back thanks to Whisper. 10-minute rune is top, so Laurel is going to be happy with that. And it's an arcane rune, so... Very happy with that indeed. Notice went for a Hand of Midas, by the way, on the Slardar. So yep. a lot of attack speed uh, in addition to Io, who is going to be linking up with him for the most part in these fights, at least uh, for the first half of the game, I would think. But now you get the actual way to farm for Slardar as well. Yeah, so one of Slardar's downfalls as a hero compared to a lot of other meta picks is his inability to flash farm. So Midas does bridge that gap pretty well along with, like you said, the attack speed, which allows you to farm Ancients quite reliably with Corrosive Haze. Uh, so you can you can stay relatively high up on the net worth chart for the majority of the game if you go this build. But at the same time, it comes at the expense of a timing, right? He could have had a dagger now and started making moves with Relocate IO Storm. Instead, they might play it the opposite way around, where it's IO Storm relocating, uh, or rather, it's IO Slaughter relocating on Storm's jump, which they tried just now and failed. Uh, it's quite a bit less reliable, in my opinion. So it's a trade-off. This mid tower is no way Whisper's gonna let them have this. Have a vendetta set up, but here comes the zip in from Laurel, focusing on Stinger to start. Boom gets the bash. That's gonna be the first kill of this engagement. See the big Illuminate coming out, but they can't really follow it up with much, and you can see the amplified damage for the Corrosive Haze. Sorry, wow, that's a blast from the past there. Onto the Nyx. The I never minded that spell name, actually. I mean, it was that quite was, generic, of it was course. It's very descriptive. It is. Unlike the tooltips in Dota <laughs> Uh-oh, see Smile, this is a big kill. He's dead. All right, that is a Static Storm. Down goes the Lash, that's a big one. The Hawk uh, changed his build, by the way. He's opting to go BKB, so. Oh, he took the Mithril Hammer. That makes me kind of sad, I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty excited to see a 12-minute Deso. Well, it would've been even quicker than that. True. would've had it been at 10. But yeah, he is opting for so not going the route I thought he was. Uh, I wonder what prompted this change. Maybe they want to play more aggressively in terms of team fighting. Like we talked about getting in and covering triangle, taking it away from Sven. If you do have that BKB, perhaps you are more successful in those engagements and can really get involved and take control of that area. Um, Deso could still be on the menu for later. It's not necessarily out of the question at this point. Just a more offensive approach terms of team fighting rather than splitting. Yep, Laurel's working on the BKB as well, so they're trying to align that in some respect, uh, noticed. Uh, looks like he's going, well, he has a Mithril Hammer, but so probably the BKB next. That does have the Blink Dagger queued up first. Oh, the Blank Light, okay. nice try. That was actually super close. Force just barely got a recast in on the tether when it broke from the blind. And will take out Notice, but he is dead himself. Yep. No Split jet lag on C Smile here. That's true. Gets the connection. I think we'll have to bring this up uh, throughout every game, regardless of who plays, and how the jet lag situation is going for everybody. Always a good excuse <laughs> when bad plays occur. Jet lag. I mean, some of these teams have been here a long time, and jet lag is not a thing, but we'll still say it. Stinger, all right. Oh, nice Force bait. out the BKB. <laughs> That's the first usage of the game. They might get this kill on Lich, but... 
That's definitely not worth the first BKB of the game. That was just cute, right? He went in together with a Nyx Illusion and just pulled him with, uh, with the Gaze. And the Hawk immediately pops the BKB in defense, but there, he was actually under no threat at all. So, cute play there from Stinger. Maybe getting his head a little bit as well. Yeah, because of the jet lag, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so awaiting the double BKB for Bet Boom before they start really applying a lot of pressure. Uh, Shard is coming on next for the Hawk. And on the other side, what is Whisper? He's got the Spirit Vessel now finished as, oh, mid lane. Okay, we got the Impale on one. Mana Burn's already used as well, which is really good against the Storm Spirit in, in general. And he can't really leave these static remnants about either because of the, the Spike Carapace setup. So it has to play a little bit careful. But obviously has the eye out to be able to correct any mistakes that he makes. But Smoke now from Beast Coast. As I see Smile... In terms of his farm, not where he would want to be at this stage of the game. Has his Yules, though. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And noticed... I mean, he's only 700 away from his BKB, so they're going to have triple BKBs. That is such a nasty timing for the Dyer to deal with. They have nothing, right? They have a Sven, but he can't he can't just stand up to them and fight them against the Sorrow Corrosive Haze hitting him with yeah. Overcharge. So that definitely seems to be the plan, is to hit this triple BKB timing and then going very aggressive. Oh. I just realized that both mids are farming. Neither of them are farming actually any good. Yeah. Seneca looks to be dead. Although, okay, the Hawk pops the BKB quite prematurely. And Whisper is going to get zipped on by Laurel. This looks to be a cleanup for him. Yules comes out from Smile. Splitter to follow. Only hits one, though. Force Major. Looks like he's going to relocate himself via the timer. So it ends up being a one for one, but definite favor going towards. Uh, bet boom. Yeah. What Beast Coast are accomplishing, though, is that K1 has got a full-on comeback, right? He was having a rough start, and he's getting very much access to his triangle. Um, the mid tower as well as the bottom tower have been unclaimable so far for Bet Boom, which they really want to get these towers, but Caudal has been a thorn in their side for that, so definitely getting a lot of value out of that offlane pick here with the high levels early on for defense. Um, but now... With the BKB on its way for Storm as well as Slaughter within a very short time, you would imagine that a smoke over there and at least a warding mission will take place, and the uh, icing on the cake will, of course, be a Sven kill. Mid tower is gone. Greater Trance hit really damn hard. Indeed. 108 damage per swing. That is the same as five melee creeps. Wow. Very cool stuff, Sintran. That is actually pretty crazy. For the the Hawk is now going for his death, so let's see if he changes his mind yet again. As Smile and company, they should be able to get this tier one tower uncontested now. But still, in terms of just net worth alone, pretty even game. You talked about K1 having a way back into the game, which is nice for him. Got his BKB, still full nine seconds available. Top lane, Stinger, takes a little bit of damage, noticed. Looks like he's going to get set up by the Glimpse, and that's going to be his second kill of the game. Mid lane, Laurel yeah. again. Oh, boy. Smile. He's the one he's taken out here. That is another value kill for Bet Boom. Looks like Nyx is going to be next. So double kill for Dachak. Is it too early for Roche? Nope. They got Slardar already in the pit with that Corrosive Haze. Yep. Imagine if they had the Deso as well, how fast this would go. It's still going to be a good time. Like, the Greater Treant's even offering a lot of extra damage for this. We yep. put the Aegis on, probably Storm. Now they have triple BKB officially online. They are. So this is a so huge power spike for Bed Boom. Let's see if they can take advantage. And I think the biggest issue for Beast Coast is the farm on Lesh, I feel like, is notice. Yeah, he's gonna notice uh, this little play here from Beast Coast. Oh, stop them in their tracks. Nice damage. Blink Dagger actually almost done on the Nyx, so that's that's going to be a nice pickup for them. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. But Lesh is, I believe, this is the only component of his BKB, unless something's on the courier right now. But yeah, it's the only one. He is quite far away from being able to really participate in fights. And that's the. <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's out of the question. Uh oh. 
Laurel. All right, he finds Sven. Was going for Whisper there. There's a Static Storm. BKB's popped by K1. Trying to get out of these. This Sprout, very annoying to deal with. Looks like they'll get the Disruptor at the very least. It's a trade for the the Lich. Is Laurel oh extremely low? That's just the BKB, and K1 gets evaporated. Him. Noticed. Still no Blink Dagger online, but Smile might be in some trouble. The Corrosive Haze is there. Oh, gets relocated to the other side, so a little bit of juke action going here. It's a double kill for Laurel now. But on the high ground, Dahak, he finds the Lash. That's another kill onto Smile. So four for one. Pretty unfortunate fight for Beast Coast. That felt like it just started off really poorly and just snowballed from there. Yeah, they were also fighting into an Aegis Storm, right? That fight is always going to be very difficult. Uh, but yeah, just seeing the, the problem Sven has in this game, right? The weakness of the hero. He gets sprouted. He gets out of the sprout, finally kills a couple of trants. And then Slarter comes over, pops his BKB, and beats him in the 1v1 anyway. So it's, uh, it's tough times. You're going to see it on a replay here, right? So it has to BKB, gets out of the trees here, gets the two swings in on the disruptor for the kill. And now watch, as noticed, pretty much just four hits. A little bit of help from the storm, not much. And it's only going to get worse now. Deso unlocked for the Hawks, so they have more minus armor. The pace of this game is going to ramp up drastically for Bet Boom. I don't think they're going to give Beast Coast much time to breathe. The Hawk is constantly going to be split pushing waves. They're constantly going to be looking for picks with either Storm or Slardar plus the relocate. They have Glimpse if they find the initiation. you got to play tight as Beast Coast without getting out farmed. It's pretty difficult to play Dota like that. And they're going to get caught in. Smiles. Oh, smile. He's going to bash down by oh. notice, but here comes K1 with that ult. Static Storm is there, though, so another kill onto the Lesh. Chain Frost not doing a whole lot. Laurel able to zip away to safety, and the rest of Beast Coast now on the run. Notice doing so much on this Slardar now has his Blink Dagger, so can definitely close the gap a lot better than before. It's, it's rare you see Slardar second on net worth. He does have Midas. Yeah, well, still. <laughs> In a game with these heroes, he has more net worth than Sven. Yeah, that's strange. Radiant are scanning. Yeah, Beast Ghosts have been on the back foot for the majority of this game, it feels like. God strength has ended now, so this fight will be very difficult for them to take. They are going to offer up K1 as a possible jump, which is not going to be taken here by Bethboom. They will instead opt to take the top outpost and tower, as well as sending their storm bottom for some bonus farm. He is now completing a Witchblade. Uh, I reckon we might see Laurel by the Revenant's Brooch this game. Um, Revenant's Brooch, really? Yeah, definitely could be a game for it. Okay. That and Shard. I'll believe it when I see it, Cinderin. Thank you. Have we seen... Uh, well, I guess we've only cast two games, but... The Wraith Pact? Are you expecting to see that in general? Um... Not talking about this game necessarily. Yeah, maybe a bit. I think some strategies that are run by, I would say, a team like OG could benefit from it when they have these like really heavy five man group up lineups around Underlord or something. I think it could be interesting for games like that. Godzilla is going to get three shot by Nature's Prophet. More uh, than looks like four. Yeah, four. Misses one shot as well, and they're going to oh clean up God. the Keeper of the Light as well. K1 with the Crows of Haze applied. Laurel. Has the gem right now. Don't really need it. Glimpse back. K1. Inside the sprout. Static storm. BKB forced. He's going to pop God Strength as well. Okay, this could be a big kill on to notice. So pops the BKB. And here comes Force Major saving the Slardar. And now the zip into the other side. Notice jumps back into the fray. K1 getting beat down. Good trying Halliburg. to get the kill on to Slardar. Finally does so. But there is the sprout that we talked about pre game. Ends up resulting in yet another kill going the way of Bet Boom. Stinger, glimpse back inside the kinetic field, and he's donezo as well. So double kill for Dahak. Good value on the Halberd there at the very least from K1. We'll get them a kill unnoticed, but it's then you have to keep in mind your Sven had to buy Halberd, right? You're not getting the really big stuff that you want as fast True. as possible because you have to go for a plan B against this Slardar matchup. They find a little pick here on Suneko. It'll help. But still, slowly but steadily, more and more gold being funneled into the coffers of Bet Boom. And the Hawk is actually closing in on a Nullifier now, which is a very, very strong counter item to Lich in general. 
but then also Lich's items. He will opt for a Force Staff here to try to save them from the Sprout. Well, if you're nullified, it's not really going to work, and it adds so much damage to your punches as well with the Corrosive Haze. It's an all-around, very well-rounded lineup here and good strategy in the itemization. So the Halberd coming out here against Notice is the only reason K1 stays alive. So that Disarm as well as the Stun, and then K1 ultimately dies afterwards. So kind of in vain, but at least got the Slaughter kill. Happy to see Nullifier back, piggybacking off of what you were saying. It's actually quite close to finishing it too. Yep. Only 700 away. Of course, you... Wait, how does it work now? Can you BKB while it's projectiling towards you? And then you don't get nullified? Yeah. Yeah, I think because so. Because you can cast it while they're BKB, then it works, right? No. I'm pretty sure they changed that. Am I wrong? We I had this discussion with somebody. As Lich is dead. Nice frost shield, bro. Bruh. All right, I'm going to read the tooltip once he gets it in here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I remember looking at the tooltip, and it didn't, didn't say anything useful. Leshrak, okay, saves himself for a little bit with that Yules. Laurel taking a lot of damage, but they're still going to find the kill that they want. Laurel, mana burn to a very high degree. The Hawk, there's the Nullifier, kiting K1, and that is a beautiful oh kill for him. God. They're just getting everything that they want right now. It looks like the Nyx will die as well. He more or less TP'd in next to the Sven and just fought him head on. Yep. Like, how often do you see Sven running away from Nature's Prophet? True. But the Hawk had the BKB popped, so he couldn't halberd him, and he's just stronger. Like, it's... Yeah, this is looking like uh, the makings of the first lane of Barracks, unless Whisper can do some really good spamming here. Stinger could put on a Frost Shield, but it's actually on cooldown. Glimpse. Yep, and that's a dead lich. I mean, they have so much gap close between Storm and Slardar alone, and not to mention Io with Nature's Prophet. They can be everywhere at yeah. any time. It's a pretty Everything, nasty everywhere, strategy. all at once, Cinderin. Yeah, that's the name of a movie that you recommend. You say is really good. That's right. I highly listen recommend to you. it. I haven't watched it yet. I know. You never will. Uh, maybe soon. No, this is working on. AC. The AC has his sights set on a Moon Shard after and an Aghanim Scepter after that center. He's set up for the ultra late game. I love people that put like 10 items in their inventory Radiant or their quick buy. As so opposed you know to, what they're thinking. No, I, because they're ambitious, mm. you know? Actually, in this case, because they're up so much, that's the opposite of ambition. He's expecting to lose to the point that the game gets extended. As Stinger's dead... And okay, oh, that's a that's really a long, long zip. He has to be careful. Nullifier's applied to smile for a little bit, but there's the split earth. Laurel completely out of mana. Still has the BKB, though. Gonna get hooked up with that IO. They do lose the Disruptor, but it's a one for one. Focusing now on the Leshrak. A big crush onto two from Noticed. That is a dead Leshrak. Now, continuing to kite K1, although gets brought back in thanks to that blinding light. So a nice value kill for Beast Coast. Okay. Did require a buyback onto Lich, but that's the first engagement in the last feels like 10 minutes that's gone kind of their way. I mean, they, they lose a position too, but he's way less farm than, than the Slardar. Yeah, Laurel bit off a little bit more than he could chew there and got punished. I mean, he's not the one dying, but they they got forced into a really awkward position where Slardar comes in to help, and they have to bring in the IO as well for the battery on Storm. Um, so yeah, that, that was a bit of a, an easy punish for Beast Coast. They got something their way. Quite a lot of the gold actually going to Caudal here. Has Octarine Core close to Hex on Whisper. So that might change things around if they can get some good control on Storm in the initial jump or maybe catch the Slarder off guard or something like this. Problem still remains though. K1 is struggling to deal the... Dish out the damage. He's just getting control. Then Furion, he's got the level 20 talent. So if Lich is dead, you're kind of stuck there as Sven. Yeah. You need that four Staff to save you. Nobody else in your team is even buying one. Oh, they so. did see the nullifier, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's Second true, actually. Roche. So what can you do? There's just no counter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nullifier, uncounterable. All right, Roche is being taken out. Beast Coast is kind of close, but I think they're going to be too late now. Scan comes out, so now they definitely know. But too late. Laurel gets both the Shard and the Aegis. Oh, yeah. 
They get that shard on Storm. And we'll see what they can do with this. I mean, the Aghanim Scepter was also picked up by Laurel. He's sitting next to two they bounty are. runes. Their lineup is so insane if they get the jump. Like, think about it. They can slaughter a crush, then they have the they have the Aghanims pull as an alternative way of engaging the fight. If they catch any two heroes, they pop the the storm shard, ideally with Nature's Prophet and Slaughter nearby, and they just kill them. Oh, nullify onto smile. Yeah. No blink attempt here from notice. He actually could have connected that, I think, but You know it would be cool if Nullifier dispelled taunts. What do you think? Yeah, that would be really cool. Thanks. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Thanks, bro. Dispel taunts. Yeah, imagine Leshrac like doing his little pony dance and then it just gets dispelled by nullifier. Don't you stop cool. dancing if you get hit by literally anything? Do you still do you You're not taking damage time? from nullifier? Mm. I don't see why you would stop. Like okay. That would be a really cool addition to the game. Yes. And of course make taunting be able to taunt every 10 40 seconds like before. Milliseconds. Yes, you would love that one. 13k lead for Bet Boom. Uh, if you missed it, they played Boom in the first series. They split that one to one. And Beast Coast so far in 0 and 2. So really looking for a win to get on the board for the, the Stockholm Major in Group A. Laurel, Aegis, not even remotely close to expiring. So just trying to get a little bit more map control and. Sprout's being canceled constantly. Dehawk has the Satan. He is looking disgusting. Just what a disgusting build. Just complete right click carry. Laurel jumps in onto Sven. Splitter that actually does hit onto the Storm Spirit. Force Major trying to save the Storm in the meantime. Of course, this is just the Aegis, but if they can get it really quick, this could work out to their favor. Laurel is going to live, though, it looks like. In the cover of the trees. Now going on top of K1, who is nullified inside the Sprout, so he's leashed. They do take the Storm Spirit. There's Instant the Hex, hex to follow. BKB. They're going to be able to get the Storm Spirit. Nicely done for Beast Coast. Only required the buyback onto the Nyx Assassin. Dahak getting healed up to a high degree thanks to Force Major zipping in there. The buyback again, this time from Sven. So K1 without the ult to work with. They're still going to fear it. Force Major gets Storm Bolted. And he's done so. But the nice glimpse taking K1 back to his fountain. But Beast Coast able to get something out of this. But can they get more? Because it's still a 16k net worth deficit for them. They used the biggest buyback of them all in their team. They used the Sven. If he gets caught later, they're in serious trouble now. There's a very easy path to victory now for Bet Boom if they can ever find that Sven. It's going to cost a little bit here on Suneko. Yeah, Laurel. Again, getting a little bit caught out, I think. This time it wasn't him just diving into the enemy team behind the tower, but. Uh, he did not manage to BKB when he respawned from the Aegis, got instant hexed by Caudal. Mm. So despite that, Betboom actually still took the fight, right? They had the Storm die, oh not boy. BKB a second life. Oh boy, nullifier. There's, surely he can't just There's do this. There's the Sprout, but they have a lot of global potential. Somebody's coming, it's Notice. Jumps in with the Crush. All right, if he There's dies There's a Corrosive here. Haze as oh well. K1 goodness. is dead to the last right click from the cock. That's quite possibly game, yeah. actually. 100 seconds. No so set. much building damage and so much time. If they can just group up, they even find a DD. Why not? Put them salt in the wound here. Notice we'll grab this. They're going to find an easy Lesh pick on this ward. Yep. And Notice gets that with the increased AoE from Slithering Crush. Thanks to that shard. Looks like Stinger is next. And Beast Coast look to be taking a game one loss in all likelihood. There's the nullifier again. Whisper <laughs> is dead again. Well, they're doing their best to shove out waves here. Still, man, no I love wave this. Connected. I know we talked about it already. The nullifier purchase has paid dividend. This is such a cool pickup from the Hawk. Yeah. The Hawk. Now buy back onto Stinger. That's Whisper. Buy back onto Whisper. That's Stinger. <laughs> Buy back onto somebody. Oh, All the right. hawk is the in. Hawk, yep, that's a nullifier again, and that is a dead whisper. That stinger. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> and that should be it. I assume GG's will be called here, and there we go. So game one of this two-game series between 
Bep Boom and Beast Coast goes to Bep. So Bep Boom are two and one so far today. Yep. They've looked. I mean, game one.